Halli, hallo, and welcome back to this fourth video of our new series. As you can see, I've finally gotten rid of that pop-up window that I've for some reason been ignoring for a long time. I, I just didn't see it, but now it's finally gone, so yay for that. So in this video, I think we should draw something to the screen, something other than the black screen that we drew the last time. And the way that I think that we're going to do that is to just put a temporary rectangle in our game class which could represent something like an entity like a player or something but we're just gonna make it now to test with so let's do that let's say we get a rectangle rectangle and alt enter to auto import and it's part of the AWT package and let's make that rectangle so it's a new rectangle and we give it an X position, a Y position, a width in pixels and a height in pixels. And let's just do it 50 by 50. So now we have our rectangle. We need a way to get the rectangle from the display class. Uh, so let's press Alt, uh, insert and generate a getter for the rectangle and now we are done in the game class let's go to the display class so now inside the render method which takes in the game the render method of course knows about the game's public methods so it knows about the state that the game will let it know about for now which means that we can get the rectangle from the game uh, let's just do that here for now and so let's get that rectangle get rectangle and we need to set a color for the rectangle and I'm gonna make mine blue and then let's fill rect and this takes in the exact same um, things that we took in before um, and the ones that make up a rectangle. <laughs> awesome. So let's do rectangle get X and see the problem now though uh, is when using a rectangle it stores its values in doubles and the fill rec methods want ints. So we'll have to cast all of these to ints. So let's do that. Rectangle get Y get width and all right there we go so we've filled a rectangle at the position with the size of our rectangle so if we try this out now we should see a blue rectangle at the top left of our screen and we do that's awesome but just to make it more fun, let's try to get it to move. And we can do that now inside of the game class in the update function. Um, so let's take our rectangle and then say set location. And it wants an int x and an int y for the location. So we'll just get the location that it's already at, get x which unfortunately is still a double. So we'll have to cast it. Ah, oh, Jesus. There we go. And then let's just leave it at the same Y position that it's already at. So th this means that it will move to the right on the X axis. So yeah, if we try this now, it should be moving. And it is. Our rectangle is now moving to the right. Awesome. Uh, maybe you can see that it stutters just a little bit. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but we are going to change our game loop a little bit. If you read the thread that I um, that I linked to in our game loop video, they talked about this fixed time step. If we want to utilize the fixed time steps with the rendering, 
we actually need to pass in a number to the renderer that it can interpolate with. Uh, because otherwise, I mean, it would it will just render the exact same image several times because the image won't update until the update method is called. So if it updates at 60 uh, times per second, but it renders at, let's say, 120 times per second, then, I mean, every two uh, renders are going to be exactly the same image. So it's just going to do the same work twice. So either we put in the value that it will interpolate with, but I feel like that's maybe more than we need right now. So what I'm going to do instead is that I'm going to also clamp the rendering to 60 times per second. Um, and at first, maybe you feel like putting the render inside of this update loop. But then if the update and the render takes more than the allowed time for an update, uh, it will never recover. So what I, what I want to do instead is I want to check if the accumulator is larger than or actually equal to update rate. And I'm going to change that for this as well, larger than or equal to. Um, so if it's updated at least once, then we do a render. Because now we have something new to render. So uh, and as long as we don't do anything computationally heavy or that goes for rendering as well. This will never be a problem. It will always update and render 60 times per second. So let's try that out. And it looks a lot smoother while also <laughs> rendering and updating 60 times and sometimes the one. So I still haven't posted these videos yet, so I haven't really um, at the time of making this video, nobody's told me why this sometimes happens. But as you can see, it's all running smoothly. Um, it is way off screen now, though, but that's not part of this. So I will meet you up in the next video and we'll see where we go from there. All right. Hey, though.